what I'm what I'm doing tonight is I'm going into module four, and uh, I guess I better uh, introduce myself. Let me start all over again. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are around the world. Welcome to Kilroy's world. Welcome to uh, my office. I'm going to be talking about series circuits and the voltmeter, and I'll just go through this uh, because we're going to eventually take and make. Let me see if I can grab this without knocking it off. One of the labs will be using uh, this, this uh, uh, DC milliammeter. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it for deflection and turn it into a voltmeter. But anyway, I'm going to go through talking about voltmeters. So I will just begin. Um, the analog voltmeter basically deflects and indicates uh, a number or a deflection. And uh, it's got a little magnetic coil inside that as current runs through it, it deflects the needle through, through magnetism. Um, these were used way back, but it, it really works to simulate uh, uh, how a series circuit application works. And we're going to be talking about the different resistors that you have to put in the circuit so that the current gets limited, so that the needle doesn't go, you know, pegs out totally, and you, you get full deflection. And of course, that varies on the amount of voltage that you're going to be running through, through the circuit that you're testing or through the circuit that you're running. Um, and, you know, I guess, I guess it's going to look pretty bad, I think. But I'm gonna I'm gonna see what it looks like when I go full screen with this. Let me bring this up. It's either that or just totally kill the green screen, and I may I may just end up killing the green screen. So yeah, yeah that that, that that'll work I guess um, for right now. But uh, there's there's the the meter or a meter that we're gonna be messing with. Like I said, my my uh, settings on on the green screen got all messed up. But uh, let, me, let me lower myself down so I look better. Right? <laughs> anyway, I um, wonder if that helped over there. No, it didn't. Um, so like I said, the analog meter actually reacts to the current that's flowing through there. We're going to use the resistors to, to limit that current. Um, there's a maximum amount of current that these meters will actually, uh, um, you know, are actually built for. If you run too much current, can you imagine what happens? Um, I'll let you think about that for a second. Um, so too much current will not only bend, you know, and destroy the, the, the needle, but, uh, you know, it could cause the fire to, or it could, if nothing else, blow a fuse or melt the thing or, you know, just mess it up, I guess. I'm trying to think where where they're used anymore because they've been they've been replaced by digital displays yeah it cooks that's right it cooks and you know it cooks and you let the magic smoke out and when you let the magic smoke out man you don't want that <laughs> it definitely cooks so when current flows through the meter it could it could you know give you a, a voltage drop will, will occur on the meter okay and then that's how that's how the deflection takes place in this sense. Um, and then you can associate where on the meter it, it is depending on the current and the voltage drop and the deflection basically as to what the, the actual value is. Um, so meter current and resistance. There's a magnetic coil in there. Yeah, it could weld too. That's, that's true. Uh, of course, it probably won't get that bad, but because that's that's a lot of amperage, we're probably going to be drawing milliamps through here. You know, as as you can see, that's that's milliamps. So it's thousands of an amp that we're actually pulling through there. Um, but it is designed for a specific for a specific. Uh, 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 it's designed for a specific, um, you know, rating. I mean, like like anything, has got a rating, right? Um, and it's got a resistance in there too. So depending on the resistance, there'll be a voltage drop that drops across there. And then you got to put another resistor in, in series, like I said, with it so that 
the current gets limited running through there. And I know I'm repeating myself, but that's that's the way it works. Um, if you do it that way, you can use it as a voltmeter because the actual voltage that drops across here is is what what the deflection takes, or, or what the needle displaces is what that deflection becomes. So down here um, in, in this example, and I'm going to go ahead and set this thing down before I drop it or break it, um, there's a one milliamp meter, which, which is kind of like what we have. Um, and uh, it's got an internal resistance of 3,000 ohms or 3K. And if we, if we were to measure this, we could actually see um, what, the, what the resistance of this is. Let's see, let's see just by chance on this one, but, but uh, the meter is connected as the circuit shows right, right here to a 12 volt supply. Um, the resulting current is four milliamps that flows through the meter. So um, if, you, if you take voltage divided by resistance is equal to current, you take 12 volts, you divide it by 3000 ohms, and what you get is 0 0.004 amps or four milliamps, right? So, and, but the four milliamps is, is as much, is like four times as much as what that particular meter here being displayed uh, is, is, a, is a rated at. You know, I don't, I don't honestly know what these are rated at. I guess we could look it up with the number, but, but uh, I am gonna check the resistance on this thing. Set this over to um, <laughs> resistance. There we go. I'm going to set it to 20K. Probably 2,000. No, let's set it to 20K. Um, turn it on. Let me, let me do something. Let me, let me go big on this. And I'm going to just move the camera down. So, so by doing this, you'll you'll see some things here that take place. Let's let's see if let's see if it does it. No, I, I can see it. Good, good. I can see it. I can see it. So, this right here, I'm going to check the resistance of this meter, and it shows to be 2.4 k. What did I put it on? I put it on. I put it on the 20k range, yeah. And, and the reason I was kind of looking is because that little old cheap meter, the way the way it, it it looks is I've got 200 ohms there, I've got 2,000 ohms there, and then up here is 20k. But the numbers down here, so it kind of looked like the number was was right there. That's why I was going so. What's this number? Well, it's it's that one right there, which is 20k. So, so what did I say? 2.4. Let me let me do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Come on, come on. Yeah, 2.37. Because it's on the 20K range, it's 2.37K. I'm going to write this down somewhere where I can find it again. 2. Point, what did I say? 3, 4, 2. 2.7? 2.7 is what I said. And one more time without my pen in the hand. Yeah, 2.37, 2.36. There. Now we beat that horse dead, right? So like I said, that that meter's got a certain face value of milliamps. And actually, look at this one. You know, I said this one doesn't have, but but it does. If you look at the face value of this, that actually is one one milliamp, right? It's 
if, if you see it, it's, it starts at 0 and it goes 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. So the face value of this is 1 milliamp, just, just like that up there is. And hey, that says 3K. So really this meter that we have is pretty much the, uh, the meter that's being displayed there. Even though that, that we got 2.37, that's a little low, but um, close enough. At least we know exactly what we've got on, on that meter. Like I said, so if we calculated the current of this of this meter with with the 3K, we come up with about 0 0.004 amps, which is like four times what the actual display uh, is is rated at. So what we'd want to do is we would want to take a, a current limiting resistor and put it in in series with the meter. As you can see, here's here's our meter, and then. We're going to take and throw a resistor in in the same circuit, and by doing that, not only does it does it drop voltage here, but it also drops it here. But the main thing is that it it takes and it limits the 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 current that's basically flowing through the circuit, and that's why we use current limiting resistors to limit the current. Duh, right? Yeah. So. The value of the resistor can be calculated with, you guessed it, Ohm's law, right? Back, back over here, we said the current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. If you look at I and cover it up, that's, that's how I like to put it. Just cover it up. Just put your, put your finger over it. What is the resulting uh, formula? Well, obviously it's, bring this back. Obviously if you cover it up, then it's voltage divided by resistance and uh, and that's that's what that's saying right right there so uh, the same thing could be done down here right so using Ohm's law let's go to the next one uh, we would have to we would have to do voltage divided by current which would be resistance in that case so if we wanted to know what that resistor what R2 would be R2 can be found by doing voltage divided by current well, what is the current? The current going through here, we really don't know what the current is, but we do know that we only want one milliamp of current flowing through here. So automatically, we could go over here and, and put, and put 0 0.001 as the current, because that's what we want. We want to limit the current in the circuit to one milliamp. And by doing that, again, we go back to the, to the formula, we, which is voltage divided by, by current, which is equal resistance. We, we look at, at the Ohm's law. We're trying to find a resistance, which is right there, and it's voltage divided by current. So voltage divided by current is, is 12 volts divided by 0 0.001 amps. That's equal to 12 uh, kilo ohms or 12 K ohms. So that resistor, if we put that in there with this 3 K um, resistance of the meter, then the actual current flowing through the circuit would be 0 0.001 uh, amp, one milliamp. And that right there would, would give you what's called full deflection on that meter. It would, it would drive it up. And right now the meter is not, not adjusted for zero very well. But, but the point being is I can adjust that to be perfectly zeroed, which I'm, I'm going to probably end up having to do, so that, so that it's at zero. With, with no current flowing. And then as the voltage goes up or as we turn it on, uh, we, we get more current flowing through there. That's how we figure out what that uh, resistor needs to be to limit the current through that circuit. So the total resistance of the circuit should be 12 K ohms. Now, the series resistor will have a value of 9 K, right? Because we figured that it was 12 K. So this resistor actually isn't 12K. It's the total resistance in the circuit, which is, which is R1 or R2 plus, plus the resistance of the meter. The two added up is, is that 12K. So because the, the uh, internal resistance of the meter is 3K, then we take 12K minus 3K, which is equal to 9K. And then that'll limit the current to one milliamp through there, which will mean the meter is fully deflected. So we find the current value of the analog meter, right? And this is typically found by just looking at the deflection. And then since that one there is 
one milliamp, or wait a second, it's 100 milliamps, I'm sorry, not one, then actually if we used the other resistors that we were using, it would only deflect, what, one-tenth of the way up, right? Because it would be one, one milliamp instead of 100, I'm sorry, a hundredth of the way up instead of all the way over. So, so the one shown here is 100 milliamps. 100 milliamps will allow it to deflect the whole way. Now, so what we need to do is we need to determine the voltage to be applied to the circuit, right? We need to calculate the total resistance of the circuit when the voltage uh, is, uh, is, is measured, and then the current, current rating of the meter is, is the things that we need. So we use an ohmmeter to measure the resistance of the analog meter, kind of like we did here. Remember, we measured this one, and it was 2.37 K ohms, right? I'm going to put down K ohms before I forget. I put the 237, and I always, always tell students, well, what is it? What's the label on it? You always use the label. And what did I do? I didn't put the label. Shh, don't tell anybody. Okay. Um, so we subtract the resistance to the meter from the total resistance, which we did. Okay. In our case, it was 237 K ohms. And then we place the resistor. Uh, in series with the meter so that we can uh, make a voltmeter. So we connect the circuit to the meter. The pointer on the analog meter will move to full deflection once it's set up that way. So here's an example. Analog meter is rated at 1 milliamp and 2100 ohms. So determine the series resistor that should be placed in the circuit to measure a 9 volt uh, battery at full scale. Now that would make this a 9 volt voltmeter, right? And uh, so, so this, so this example takes us to. Okay, we have we have nine volts. We have uh, one milliamp of deflection, right? So we need a nine k ohm resistance or total resistance in the circuit. And we know we have twenty one hundred ohms in the circuit or or in the meter. And we know we need nine nine k ohms of resistance in in the whole circuit, so of course it's that's uh, that resistor we're going to use there is going to be 9k minus 2100, which in this case it turns out to be uh, 6.9k ohms or 6900 ohms. So that resistor there, our resistor R3, would be 6900 ohms to make a one milliamp meter deflect with nine volts at full scale. All right, so that's kind of the gist of it. Let's see, that was. That was um, the the 11.2 info voltmeter. We're going to be doing series circuit voltmeters, which is uh, less than 8.1. And in this case, it's pretty much uh, the same thing that we did. We're going to have an analog movement uh, controlled uh, by electromagnets, right? We're going to put a resistor in place, and we'll use the ohmmeter to find the resistance to the meter. That's the first step. Then we look at the face of the meter and see what the maximum current is. And I'm pretty certain they're all um, 0.1, I believe. I, th I think they're all the same. Or I'm sorry, 1 uh, milliamp. I'm pretty certain. There may be some 50 microamp meters in there, but I don't think so. I think I went and looked and found enough of these so that everybody could use the, uh, the 1 milliamp ones. Then we determine the voltage that we want to measure. And those, those voltages are down here, 15, 22, 24, and 30. Um, then, uh, then we use Ohm's law to determine the resistance of the circuit, which is voltage of the source, which is the vo this voltage, uh, divided by the current of the meter, right? And that gives us uh, a, a resistance. And then we find the value of the resistor, which is the total resistance minus the resistance of the meter, and that's also in ohms. And then we connect the circuit up, determine the, uh, the needle of the analog meter to full deflection. If not, you recalculate the problem and, and you try again. So if you, if you make it wrong, um, the, the worst thing is that you use a resistor that's too small and it just pegs it, right? The not so bad thing is if you don't use one that's, that's enough or calculated under. Um, which is probably going to be okay, I guess. Basically, we just have to find those those resistors, kind of like what I showed you a second ago. And you can always, and, and you will, uh, hook it up to uh, um, to the power supply 
this other one. We're going to kind of use a decade box, which which is this this little tool right here, which which uh, has been used before. And basically, you're going to have somebody else set the box for you. So what we're doing is we're we're trying to find the unknown resistor values. So we'll set the decade box to 1K. We'll read the current in the circuit, and the voltage dropped across the decade box. And then we divide the voltage current by I to calculate the resistance. In other words, voltage divided by current equals resistance. We'll repeat the process using different decade box values. Um, can you determine the value of the resistance? And I guess I could make this bigger. Can you determine the value of the resistance by knowing its current and voltage? The answer is yes, of course you can. So you position the decade box so you cannot see the values. Yep, you don't want to see the values. Oh yeah, this is the one. And then you have your lab partner uh, take and dial in a resistance. And then using the meter readings, you determine the value of the resistance the decade box. And then you repeat the process. So you're going you're to measure the current. Then you're going to measure the voltage across the decade box. Then you're going to calculate the resistance of the decade box, and then you can you're going to have uh, the actual resistance of the decade. So so you'll 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 measure the current in the circuit. You'll measure the voltage across the decade box. You'll calculate the resistance because you you already know what the measured current is, right? Um, and of course you know what the voltage is. So then you'll see what the voltage drop is. You calculate that, and then you figure out through Ohm's law. Um, current or, or uh, resistance is voltage divided by current, right? What the resistance of it is, and as you can see, you've got we'll have we'll have two resistors. And by the way, it it won't matter. Well, I was going to say it won't matter. It, it will matter because the current will be affected. But if we don't have enough one k uh, resistors, we'll just substitute two other resistors in there. And then we'll, we'll make note of the changes. But the point is, is we'll have two other resistors in the circuit, and then we'll be changing the decade box for the different resistances. So, so that's, that's that assignment.